Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and I am out here today with an interesting, rather old, but rather long-serving French rifle. This is a model 1874 Gras. These were originally made in 11 by 59 millimeter, rimmed, a uh, early single-shot black powder cartridge. And what makes this one interesting is that it's a model that was actually rebarreled for 8 millimeter Lebel to use in second-line service in World War I. So the story behind these Gras is it's kind of cool, and it's what's neat about it is the French never threw away anything. So we can see this great path of evolution through their firearms. Uh, and the story of this one actually starts in 1866. That's when the French developed the Chassepo, which was their first needle rifle. So, needle rifle, the idea was, this was the first time they were issuing a breech-loading rifle. And instead of using a metallic cartridge, it actually used a paper cartridge, where you'd have a bullet and then a literally a, a paper band, kind of like a cigarette. In fact, apparently the, the tooling they used to make paper cartridges was basically adapted cigarette and cigar making tooling. Uh, anyway, paper cartridge wrapped around a charge of black powder, and there was a primer inside the paper cartridge. So you'd stuff that into the breech of the rifle, and instead of a typical firing pin, the bolt actually had literally a pointy needle that would, when you fire, it would poke through the paper, through the powder, and hit the primer and fire the cartridge. Now, the paper was typically soaked in a, a nitrocellulose mixture. It was flammable, and the muzzle blast would blow all the paper out of the barrel. So it was kind of, actually, it was kind of first early caseless ammunition. Uh, you didn't have to extract anything. Now, because you didn't have a metallic cartridge to seal the bore, the, the breech, the back end, what they had instead was a rubber obturating ring that would help seal. Um, when the gas pressure from firing hit, it would compress this rubber, which would cause it to expand and seal against the sides of the chamber. Now, the Chassepo was, and really, it was a, a pretty good firearm. It was a lot better than the German needle rifle of the time, the Dreyse. And in the Franco-Prussian War, the Chassepo actually made a pretty good account of itself. Unfortunately for the French, uh, their artillery and their, simply their numbers were, uh, the, the Germans had them by a long margin. And so even though they had a better infantry rifle, they didn't end up winning. Um, and in the aftermath, so actually aftermath of the Franco-Prussian War, uh, the Germans adopt the Mauser model of 1871, which is their first metallic cartridge breech-loading rifle. It's a single-shot rifle, very similar in configuration to this, really. And all of a sudden the Germans jump to the, the front of the technology race in small arms, and the French need to catch up. So what the French did was, as I mentioned earlier, they never throw anything out. They developed a way to convert their Chassepo needle rifles into this, the 1874 Gras, so that it would fire a single-shot metallic cartridge. And they did that basically just by modifying the bolt and the chambers a little bit. Now, some of the Chassepos, well, a lot of the Chassepos were converted to the Gras rifle configuration, and then after 1874, after they developed the Gras, they started making Gras rifles from scratch. So this one happens to be an 1874 Gras. So this was made from scratch as a cartridge firing gun. Then, in 1880, so you'll, you'll see that marked here on the side, MLE 1874, and then it's also marked M80. Now that's a modification that was done in 1880, a pretty simple one really. They, they basically just improved the gas venting of the Gras bolt so that in the case of a ruptured cartridge it would be a safer gun, you know, direct the gas out to the side away from the shooter's eyes. Uh, and, and so you'll find a lot of 1874 slash M80 rifles, and you'll also find 1866 slash 74 slash 80 rifles. And then, well, let me slow down for a moment. At that point, Gras is a good rifle. But it's only in service until 1886, when the French realized that in order to get back in the lead, uh, the Germans, having adopted in 1884 a tube-fed magazine rifle, well, uh, now the French need a magazine-fed rifle as well, and the French leapfrog everyone else in the process by developing smokeless powder, and they developed the 1886 Lebel rifle. So by the time World War I starts out, pretty much everyone in the French army was being armed with Lebels. Frontline soldiers, rearguard soldiers, everybody. It was the standard infantry arm. And when World War I breaks out, the early battles in 1914 are far bloodier than anyone had expected this war to be. And all of a sudden, the French are losing more rifles to just combat losses than they can manage to manufacture as replacements. So they look around and realize, hey, 
we have all of these top of the line Lebel rifles, you know, guarding train stations in the south of France and, and whatnot with second line troops. Let's see what we can give them from, you know, the arsenal stockpiles so that we can take their really good rifles and give them to the troops at the front to make up for what we aren't able to manufacture as quickly. So they took a bunch of Gras rifles, 11 millimeter single shots, out of storage. They were already manufacturing labels, so what they did was pull the barrels off the Gras and replace them with label barrels in 8 millimeter label. So now you have a single shot 8 millimeter rifle. It's using standard ammunition. Uh, these have a single locking lug for lockup, but it's a pretty beefy one, and you know they weren't planning on shooting these a whole lot, and it was it was strong enough to work. Now it's interesting. Most countries, when they did a conversion like this, they would actually bore out the, say, the 11 millimeter barrels, and then sleeve them with a small diameter bore. Uh, for example, the Vetterli Carcanos used by the Italians, kind of for the same reason. That's what they did. They put a, a small diameter sleeve inside the original barrel. The French did the opposite. They took brand new Lebel barrels, put them onto the Gras receivers, and then they had this little bit of an issue up here. They wanted to be able to mount the original Gras bayonets. They wanted to be able to reuse things like this front band. And the Lebel barrel is smaller in diameter on the outside as well as the inside, and so it didn't fit any of this hardware. So the French solution, kind of clever, was they took about the front six inches of the Gras barrels that they were discarding, chopped it off, and then bored it out and sleeved it over the label barrel so that now you have the outside diameter of the original. You've got the bayonet lug right here from the original. Now it fits the bayonet, it fits the front hardware, everything works nicely. Now for most of these rifles the story ends there. They were issued to second line troops in World War I, guarded, you know, artillery depots, railway stations, whatever, and then they were thoroughly obsolete and put back in the arsenals after the end of World War I. However, some of them continued to see service. Uh, and in the late 1930s, the French actually, they revised the 8mm Lebel cartridge. At that point, it was becoming more of a machine gun specific cartridge, and they wanted something that was a little more effective. They redesigned it. Um, what they actually did was move the widest diameter of the bullet from in front of the case mouth to behind, inside the neck of the cartridge. What that meant is the barrel was unchanged, but now the neck of the cartridge was slightly larger in diameter, and in order for them to work effectively, they had to actually slightly bore out the, the throat, or the neck, of the 8mm Lebel chambers. So they went through and did that to virtually every 8mm weapon in the inventory, and when they did it, they notated it with a mark of an N. This was called Ball N, N for Nouveau, New. And this particular Gras is one of the ones that has actually been converted to Ball N. Uh, if you look closely at it, you can see it's got some black paint on the receiver, which was done at the same time. So this rifle was actually, again, Arsenal reconditioned in the late 1930s, and this probably saw second-line use in World War II as well. So it's a rifle that was made sometime in the 1870s, used in World War I, put back in the Arsenal, used in World War II again, and then it's actually been duffel cut under the front band, so it appears that it probably came back to the United States with some GI who was stationed in France at some point. So really a pretty fascinating and extensive history on this rifle, which I think makes it really cool. Um, oh, I didn't mention the, the 8mm Lebel conversion is known as the, the modification of 1914, so you'll find these stamped M14 as well. You will also find them with, they have Lebel rear sights, instead of uh, Gras rear sights, and this upper wooden handguard was added in 1914. So this is the easy way to find an 8mm one at a glance, is look to see the rear sight and this wooden handguard, and that's a giveaway for the 8mm Lebel version. At any rate, I think we ought to do a little bit of shooting. Like I said, this is a single locking lug design because it is converted from the Chassepot rifle, and uh, no magazine, you just drop one in at a time. I'm going to go ahead and put in some earplugs and let's uh, fire off a couple shots and just see what it's like. All right, loading procedure is very simple. Just drop around into the chamber, close the bolt and lock it, and fire. Now you'll notice my stock has moved forward slightly. Unfortunately, the duffel cut in this has come a bit loose, so I have to be a little careful with it. And the extractor is non-functioning. There we go.
Ah, the extractor worked on that one. So the eight millimeter label is a reasonably hard hitting cartridge. It's a fairly big bullet. It's a, a full on combat rifle cartridge from the era, but recoil is not that bad. This is a, a somewhat heavy gun. Uh, it would be a little bit punishing to shoot a lot from prone or from a bench, but kneeling or offhand, really not a big deal. You know, it's kind of funny, in addition to being used by the French, one of the more iconic and historically recognized situations where the Gras really showed up was actually in Greece. Uh, the Greeks bought something like 125,000 of these rifles, manufactured actually by the Steyr company in Germany, ironically. Uh, well, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at one of the early French cartridge uh, firing guns. I think these are pretty cool, especially this one that just has this evidence written on it of so many reuses and use in so many different conflicts. I think that's that's pretty slick in a rifle. So something to uh, keep an eye out for if this is your sort of taste in firearms. Thanks for watching and tune in again to Forgotten Weapons for more early single shot rifles. All right, loading procedure is very simple. Start that over. <clears throat> that's not the loading procedure.